Hey guys, welcome to my channel. How's it going? I hope you're all doing really, really well. Today's video is a little bit different to normal. It is a top 10. It's top 10 hacks for moving house. Um, if you've not been here before, I'm Lucy and I, or us as a family, we have moved house. This will be our third move in three years. Um, we me and my other half ben had a house that we bought in 2012 we sold that in june 2016 and we moved we sold that next house in july 2017 and we moved and we've just sold our house now in june 2018 it's now the end of july but we're going to be moving house hopefully in about four weeks time so we have moved house a lot this time we are hiring movers. We're hiring a moving company to physically move the boxes. But this is 10 hacks or 10 tips for packing your house and moving house. So if you like these kind of videos, give this one a thumbs up. You should definitely subscribe to my channel. It's super easy. There is a little button boop, 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 there somewhere. You can just click that and that will take you straight to my channel and you can subscribe and we can be friends. So yeah, let's just jump in and do 10 tips or hacks for moving house. These aren't in any order, they're just 10. So let's do it. Number one, do not pay for boxes or newspapers for things for wrapping. Don't pay for them. There are so many places you can get boxes for free. Um, I'm very lucky, my mum has her own business, so she brings me boxes from anything that they have. My best friend has her own business, so she brings me boxes from there. But you can go to any supermarket, like big Tesco's, even little Tesco's to be fair. Tesco's, Asda, Sainsbury's, any of the big supermarkets, Lidl, you can get boxes for free. You can just take them. They're generally flat packed, and you can just take them and then rebuild them at home as you need them. Um wine boxes are really good really handy because they have the little dividers in and then you can put things that are breakable already separated don't go for big boxes either we made the mistake when we first moved we were like right we're just gonna get really big boxes and ben was bringing home boxes that were like this big and you fill them up and you can't lift them and we were like oh okay so now we have a couple of big boxes for teddies and stuff and pillows but generally go for sort of like crisp size like when you get a big bag of big box of crisps that size is quite good because you can still lift it um if you're going to fill it with books and stuff so yeah don't pay for boxes and newspapers just ask your family and friends to just hold on to theirs don't recycle them don't throw them away and then you're going to have your wrapping stuff if you do need to get bubble wrap then it's always more cost effective to buy a really really big roll um but we i tend to just like collect it if i get a parcel or um yeah parcels and if my mum has any i'll get it but generally i will use newspapers that i've got for free or i'll wrap things in clothes or sheets so yeah don't pay for boxes and newspapers number two declutter purge get rid of stuff you don't need um this we haven't really had to do much of that this this time because it is going to be the third move in three years so we have done two lots of decluttering previously in the last two years but we are getting rid of some stuff don't get me wrong we are getting rid of some stuff um go through your uh books and things if there's books that you just know you're never ever going to look at charity shop go through your clothes if there's something that you haven't worn for six months get rid of it kids toys kids toys oh my goodness just what i tend to do is i Every week or so, I will go through the kids' toys. And if there's something I've noticed they haven't played with, I'll put them in a box away. If they don't ask for them for two weeks, they go to the charity shop because they haven't missed them because they haven't asked for them. That's a really good... Because toddlers... I've got two toddlers as well. If you've not been here before, I've got a two-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, so we have got every piece of plastic crap toy you can imagine um, and every teddy bear you can imagine in our house. So, yeah, if they don't... If they haven't used it in two weeks or asked for it in two weeks, get rid of it. Don't tell them, just get rid of it. Um, so yeah, declutter. Go through um, pots and pans, cups. Like I went through, I realised I had like, I think I had like 34 mugs 
at no point in my life am I ever intending to have 34 people around who need a cup of tea at one time. So I went through, picked my favourite ones, gave the rest to charity. I had two sets of um, plates. I had, when we moved house last year, I bought myself a new set of plates from Ikea. And I'd kept the old plates that were all chipped and crap. So they went declutter, go through everything. And again, same thing, like with the kids, if you haven't used it, put it in a box for a few weeks, see if you don't, if you miss it, get rid of it. Yeah, declutter, declutter. Number three, pack things you don't use first. Now this is, it's kind of like ignoring declutter, but not. Like, as I said, get rid of books and stuff that you know you're not gonna read, but some things you want to keep. Like I collect cookery books. I love old cookery books and I don't look at them all the time. I've got some down here that I have not looked at for probably six months, but I collect them. So I know I'm not gonna need them, so I'm gonna pack them. They're gonna be packed and they're put in the garage for the day comes from when we're moving. Um, yeah, pack things that you don't need. Go through the loft. If there's Christmas decorations, pack them up. If you've got, if it's winter, pack your summer clothes. If it's summer, pack your winter clothes. Um, if it's the middle of summer, pack all your wellies and all your shoes that you know you're not gonna use. Uh, for the kids, we went through their cuddly toys. Now cuddly toys, like we kind of let them keep cuddly toys because quite a lot of them are from when me and Ben were younger and they mean things to us, so they keep them, but they had a lot. One of our friends uh, bought them a, I think it's like a 12 foot long fluffy caterpillar that the kids love, but we're in a two bedroom bungalow and it takes up so much space and we wanted to pack it. So what we did was got the vacuum bags, we put all the teddies in there with a the caterpillar and we told the girls that they were gonna hibernate for the summer because it was too hot for them. And they were cool with that. We sucked the air out, everything went to tiny and it's in the garage, ready to go on moving Number day. four. Clean out your kitchen cupboards. This is something I didn't do the first time and I remember doing it the week we exchanged contracts and it was so stressful trying to get it done and get everything clean and pack everything, all the last minute bits with kids. It was just a nightmare. So go through your cupboards one at a time, go through your cupboards and again, declutter what you don't need, but clean the cupboard, take everything out, clean it down because you will be amazed at how much grubbiness can get in your cupboard just from like jars and stuff um and then you can like sort through all your spices and I don't know about anyone else but I am a sod for keeping hold of old spices that I can literally open a jar and it will smell of nothing because it is so old and out of date get rid of that crap get rid of it you don't need to move house with it but go through the cupboards clean them out give them a really good wipe and then you know the week you're moving when you've got you've completed and you're moving on the friday all you've got to do is just pack everything into bags your cupboards are clean you haven't got to worry about having to scrub off bovril from the inside of your cupboard because that's not fun um you want to be able to just do the last minute bits on the week before completion because trust me especially if you've got kids, it is stressful as balls. Yeah. Number five. Now this is one that you can do quite far in advance. Like we did this um, as soon as we put our house on the market basically because we wanted to make the house more um, generic, if that makes sense. We wanted it to not have like Lucy and Ben, Lucy and Ben just splash all over it so people couldn't see past it. We have one wall in our living room that was just completely covered with probably like 30 different pictures and little ornaments and things that we've collected over the years that we love, but it is quite a lot to take in if you're coming in to look at a house that you wanna buy and you're like, oh God, cause it's a lot. Um, so we took 95% of the stuff off the wall and packed it away, like pictures and um, we've got lots of little like skull mirrors and stuff and Lots of things that mean a lot to us, but other people would just see as like a wall of crap. So we took all that away and we just left four pieces on the wall. I'll take a picture and insert it now. So you can see um, what the wall looks like now. But obviously when we took everything down, there was just nails everywhere. So we took all the nails out and the wall was so hard, it all crumbled. So we filled the wall, we filled all the holes in the wall, apart from the four that we were leaving and we repainted the wall. We just painted it white. One wall, just completely white, because we didn't have the paint 
for the rest of the room because it was like a really nice gray but we didn't have that anymore because we didn't paint it that color so we just bought white so it goes really nicely and it just makes it look clean and stuff like that you do not want to be doing you do not want to be painting the week you are moving house my next job is the girls bedroom because the girls bedroom is just they've got bunting up they've got posters they've drawn all over the walls because they are two and three and i'm such a bad mum that they have crayons all the time and just draw on whatever they want so that is what we're going to be doing this weekend we're going to be stripping their bedroom down and just repainting it and making it so it is ready for the new people to move in because you don't want to move into a house that's got holes all in the wall or 30 nails or crayons everywhere so yeah fill holes repaint do it in time so you don't have to be doing this last minute because it is not a fun job especially when it's 32 degrees at the moment where i am currently number six this is a bit of a um one for moving day to be honest when you are about to leave the house take a picture on your phone or your camera of the water meter the electric meter and the gas meter so you can actually see the readings so that you then have proof as you were leaving the house because it'll have the date on it what the meters were because you don't want to then move house and then someone that the person that's moving into your house has like a say it's not right we're not going to pay this because you this was what it was before you were you've got proof what it was when you left as you've given your meter readings to the companies same goes for when you move into your new house as soon as you go in find the meters take pictures of them and then again the people that used to own the house can pay up until that amount and you don't end up no one ends up paying what they should basically seven label your boxes properly don't just write bedroom because your new house is probably going to have or mine has got more than one bedroom and the people that are moving or the movers whoever's doing it to be honest because you can have so many boxes even when we've done it we've had to label it properly because you want to know what bedroom things are going into um so label the boxes properly so you can say bedroom one or front bedroom or if the be one of the bedrooms is green green bedroom so that the people who are moving you whether it be friends family or a professional moving company can pick up the box and go green bedroom they'll go and put it in a green bedroom so they know where it's going to go a little notepad in front of me if you're wondering what i'm looking at uh, number eight sketch a floor plan of your new house this seems a bit strange but again label the rooms so if you've got like a living room a family room a dining room whatever you've got label them on the floor plan so it's in the hallway at the new house on the wall this is just me being completely over the top but it's definitely going to help especially because we are hiring movers this time and sketch the floor plan i was chatting to the moving man about it and he said it is so much easier for them if on the day they're moving a sofa in and they know where to put it so you literally just get a bit of paper or even like a napkin or something whatever just sketch the room and just do a rectangle on my sofa so they know where to put it in relation to the room because then you haven't got to move it afterwards it's in the right place again it's a simple thing but apparently it doesn't happen very often and i said to the man would it be helpful to do this and he was like yes it would so i'm telling you number nine this is a two-part one pack a box for the car on the day um this year when we're moving it's probably going to be me um on my own and then the movers are going to be doing it someone is i'm hoping somebody's going to have my children for the day because we're not sure if ben can get the day off work or not so the movers will be in their lorry i will be in the car so in the car i'm going to pack a box so i can get there first and get stuff done before the movers arrive i'm gonna and in that box i'm gonna have a kettle because you're gonna want a cup of tea or coffee as soon as you get there because i'm british and that's just what we do we just make tea we just make tea and coffee for everybody at every possible situation so tea and coffee mugs sugar spoons biscuits that is your staple for when you're moving in i'm also going to be taking in that box or at least in my car my hoover a mop some cloth some soap a dish thing just because i want to get in there and obviously i don't want the movers to come in and put all my furniture in on dirty floors so i want to be able to go in and just hoover really quickly the whole house and mop any floors that might be dirty um 
got some bleach just put it down the toilets just to go do an initial clean before the movers start coming in with my stuff because once they put the sofa in like i said you're not going to want to move it again the sofa's in the sofa's in if you hoover beforehand you haven't got to worry that there's dirty floor underneath it and with kids who eat stuff off the floor all the time because they are disgusting it is paramount for me to try to eliminate the amount of crap that they're eating off the floor because kids are gross so yeah um what else would be good a cool box was another thing because then you can you obviously you're not gonna have a fridge to start with and like i said at the moment it is boiling here so a cool box chuck your um couple of bottles of water chuck some milk anything like that that you think might be helpful depending on what time of day it is and pack yourself a lunch in there um kitchen roll toilet roll in case you need a poo when you move toilet roll um cleaning spray a screwdriver just in case there's like a loose hinge or anything i just like to be prepared i'm a little bit of one of those people that just if i can pack for it for every eventuality then i'm happy so yeah that was part one of number nine part two is a kid's bit so i'm hoping somebody's gonna have the children for the day mum or mother-in-law or friend um but if they can't i'm gonna have the kids with me so i'm gonna pack a box which has got books toys snacks um their tablets um a potty just in case um coloring books pencils all things like that to keep them occupied so i can literally put them in one room while i'm hoovering and doing things and i know they're going to be entertained um so yeah obviously depending on the age of your kids tailor it to fit your children number 10 final one this is something that it's not a nice thing to have to do this really to be honest and we have done have to do this from personal experience when we sold our house in 2016 the people we sold it to were not very nice um i won't go into details now but they were bullies and they were just really horrible people and we kind of knew that they weren't it wasn't going to be an easy thing so when we moved the day that we were moving out as we packed up the last of the van and we were ready to go i got my phone and i went around the house and i filmed every single room i was like in there just going like bedroom showing all the cupboards were empty everything was tidy everything was clean um went through the kitchen just the whole house and showed every single room completely every single room that it was clean and tidy there was no rubbish i went through the garden to show um that there was no rubbish or dog poo because we had two dogs at the time um and then i filmed the whole front of the house the driveway the bins showing that everything was nice and tidy i rang my estate agent and told them that i'd done this and they were like that's fine we don't need it now but if anything happens we'll ring you um and then the next day i got a call from my estate agent saying that the people that had moved in had rung and complained that the bins were overflowing in the street there was rubbish everywhere that the house was disgusting it was dirty and they were going to have to pay for professional cleaners and there was dog poo everywhere um and basically um i sent the footage to the estate agents who then told them that they were liars and nothing ever more came of it but that they texted me and they were threatening legal action um and we've got no idea why like we've got the footage and the estate agents and everyone and my solicitors were just like what are they talking about you could see in the photos that everything was clean there was no rubbish they were saying that there was bin bags in the street and we've got pictures from the day where everything is completely tidy and we knew something was going to happen and they just wanted money they just wanted us to pay or we don't really know what they wanted but not everyone is trustworthy not everyone is nice and that really simple thing of just videoing your house as you are leaving whether it's whether you're selling a house whether you're moving out of rented accommodation whatever it'll take you five minutes to do it but it could save you money um so i definitely de definitely recommend doing that um i wish we didn't have to but some people are bell ends so yeah that was my 10 tips for moving house and i hope you like them if you've got any other little compilation tips you'd like me to do then let me know down below but for now thanks for watching and i'll see you soon bye guys